In the dream world scenario where the Winnipeg Jets go scorched earth, what would next year's Winnipeg Jets team look like? Is there anyone left standing from this current roster? And which players would hang back on a team that might look rather drastically different? We'll dive into all of that on tonight's episode of Locked On, Winnipeg Jets. Or Locked On, the Hockey Jets, your daily podcast on the Winnipeg Jets. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello, friends, and welcome to tonight's episode of Locked On Winnipeg Jets, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. I'm your host, Harrison Lee, an avid Winnipeg Jets fan and an online blogger. You can follow me on Twitter at HLLivingLoco and at LO underscore Winnipeg Jets. Everydayers can be sure to follow us on all of their favorite uh, podcasting platforms and YouTube. Uh, doing so, of course, and making us your first uh, listen of the day every day is something we greatly appreciate, and we just really love and appreciate your support as we dive into all of the fun stuff that is Winnipeg Jets hockey. Now, speaking of the Jets, I had thought originally, you know, maybe I'll talk about prospects tonight and all that, but you know, it just it just doesn't really get my blood going right now. Prospects are fun, but you know, the Jets. Generally speaking, when it comes to drafting prospects, we, we know what to expect with them, right? Uh, they have a good mixture of skill, a couple of home run picks, and nothing too exciting. So barring any major moves with uh, the, the 19th or so overall pick, I can't really envision um, us being in, in line for like a super exciting home run draft the way that we were last year when we got Brad Lambert. So that kind of made me wonder, well, you know, if the Jets were to say consider tearing it all down, right, and, and really stripping this team to its roots, what would the squad look like? You know, who would they probably bring in as a potential free agent contract to eat up some cap space and maybe at least make the product uh, slightly more bearable to watch while also still being bad? And who gets shipped out? Let's talk about the players that get shipped out first, because some of these guys would actually be moved. Um, either in this dreamlike scenario or even potentially in this offseason should the Jets not actually be uh, running it back like they, they kind of seem like they are implying they will. So the first player that's going to be going, obviously, is Mark Shifley. Everyone knows Shifley. Everyone knows that he is, you know, a household name here. But all that aside, you know, he's almost 30, and the Jets don't really seem to be uh, quite on the same page with him when it comes to the future of this team. I think Shifley envisioned this past season and um, the past several seasons going very differently than what actually happened. I don't think that he got along with Maurice as well as he would have liked. And I'm sure that he's kind of felt like management has stalled out. And so Shifley's future is elsewhere. I feel like that's kind of what he was implying when he said, it's too early to talk about my future with the team uh, at the end of the season. And, you know, the team at times has kind of hinted around the idea that they are exploring the options of trading him. So that one is almost like a no-brainer. Same with uh, Pierre-Luc Dubois getting traded. That is not that exciting or spicy. I mean, we all know that Dubois, great player, really good top six center, but the obvious limitations of his game and the fact that he doesn't really want to stay here makes him a very easy trade candidate. Now, that's where I would say the easy names start to uh, end, right? Because then you're starting to get into some more complicated trades, and one of them is Kyle Connor. For me, Kyle Connor remains one of Winnipeg's biggest trade pieces because he is an elite finisher. There is zero question that when it comes to goal scorers in the NHL, there aren't many players who can naturally finish opportunities the way that Kyle Connor can. Uh, he is incredibly talented when it comes to one-on-one -on -one matchups. He's got one of the best releases out there, and his eye for goal is almost second to none. The problem is that getting him to that point, getting him into the scoring positions, and having him uh, find those opportunities, it's not been that easy. You know, he's a player who really relies on his line mates to do a lot of the lifting and stuff for him as he's kind of dancing around and taking shots, which 
you know, it's fine. There are some players who really need that extra bit of a push uh, from their from their teammates. Like, who doesn't, right? Everyone relies on their line mates in some capacity. But I think Kyle's limitations this year really became apparent when Bones needed more from his game. And we saw that Kyle just doesn't really have that extra gear. And so for me, you know, at a little over $7 million, obviously, uh, Kyle is is fair value for what you're asking for from his finishing ability. But I think for the Jets, if they were to say even uh, consider tearing it down or, or really starting over, Kyle is kind of on the way out. He's got a modified no trade clause uh, after next season, and he's got a couple of years left. He's a phenomenal goal scorer, and I think in terms of trade value, there aren't many players on this team who really, I would say, appeal to teams uh, in the same way that Kyle can. I mean, you would get a massive haul on the market if you were to put Kyle out there. Uh, it's why I would honestly even think about him this offseason, even if the Jets weren't tearing it down. I, I know that it's not going to happen because um, this team loves him, and he has some really rare scoring traits that a lot of teams would covet and the Jets probably don't want to give up, but I feel like what he isn't offering uh, in terms of build up play um, and in terms of just a a shift by shift consistency in all zones of the ice for me really hurts his value and whether other teams would recognize that, I don't know, but I, I think in other areas, you know, if you were to send him to like, I don't know, Carolina or something, that is the sort of team that could really make use of his talents and sort of mask some of his biggest problems, right? Kyle is obviously one of those players who um, <laughs> somebody famously said uh, he is good at what he is good at, and he you know, is implied to be pretty bad at the things that you would expect Kyle Connor to be bad at, which is defense and anything that doesn't involve directly shooting the puck at the net. So yeah, an amazing player, but maybe somebody who has too many limitations to be a part of this team's longer term future. Um, and with him getting older too, you know, while he's not going to be old by the end of his contract, you know, he's getting closer to 30. And I, I don't think the Jets would want to be as married to a longer term deal after that to him as they would be with uh, some of their other young stars, right? So Kyle Connor, potential trade bait, you decide. Now, that's not the only player that's probably going to be on the popular side, uh, maybe getting shipped out. We'll talk about a few other names and who the Jets might bring in as free agents should they, you know, all tear it down and look to start over. But before we go any further, I want to shout out our friends and partners at Indeed. There's no I in team, but there is one in Indeed, and that's the hiring platform you need to build your team. When you're hiring, you need Indeed. Instead of spending hours on multiple job sites searching for candidates with the right qualifications, Indeed's uh, powerful hiring platform helps you do it all, whether it's attracting, interviewing, and hiring all in one convenient place. They offer an instant match service that gives you uh, huge options when it comes to finding candidates that fit all of the qualifications you need, and it helps employers find Um, around 80% of employers find the right quality candidates that maybe they weren't picking up the first time around. And best of all, you know, you have uh, a great service that allows you to invite actual applicants to apply to your job listing. And they are three uh, three times more likely to apply to your job using instant match than just doing a regular search. And for a lot of you who need those candidates quickly and on time, this is a great way to take out a lot of the stress of doing all of these hiring processes and all of these job listings that just aren't really getting you anywhere. And again, you know, you can start hiring now with a $75 uh, sponsored job credit to upgrade your job post at indeed.com slash locked on. Offer is good for a limited time. Again, claim your $75 credit now at indeed.com slash locked on. Indeed.com slash locked on. Terms and conditions apply. Need to hire? You need Indeed. Hello, friends, and welcome back to this episode of Locked On, Winnipeg Jets, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Thanks for joining us uh, again for this conversation about, you know, a fictitious scenario where the Jets tore it all down and wanted to start over. How would they approach it, right? We talked about, you know, Shifley and Dubois being shipped out, but maybe Connor would be part of this too. There are a few other players that I think are are legitimate options to potentially send on their way. Uh, One of them, of course, is Nino Niederreiter. Nino is a very easy candidate just because he's, you know, around 4 million next season, a solid middle six winger. Um, 
I think he's also one of those players that potentially you could retain if you want to just keep him as like a roster spot. Uh, but, you know, Nito was brought in to kind of compete uh, for a playoff team. And it feels a little bit unfair to stick him on a squad that would be uh, rebuilding, especially at this stage of his career. He is definitely getting up there in years and probably doesn't have uh, a ton of really productive seasons left. And so um, for me, Nita Ryder would probably be attractive to a team looking for like a really cheap middle six option. His run with the Jets has been very good. I think he'd be uh, a very easy sell for other teams. A similar player that I think would be a very hard sell for management to let go of is Adam Lowry. Uh, Lowry, you know, this season has kind of had some big highs and some frustrating lows. I would say the highs are that Adam looks like a solid middle six center, uh, especially an elite shutdown fourth line center. The lows are that, unfortunately, he still has issues finishing opportunities, even ones that fall right in front of him. Now, that was less of a problem in the playoffs when he really turned it on and, and basically had um, a con Smythe level performance in the postseason enough to make him a really attractive option for almost any team looking for a versatile two-way center. But I think all of us deep down kind of knows where his limitations lie. I think all of that said, though, if if the Jets were to sort of really tear it down, Niederreiter would probably be the one to go instead. I think Lowry is at a contract uh, value that's that's relatively cheap. Um, not too expensive by Winnipeg standards. And I feel like because he's a fan favorite and because he's like really locked into the whole Jets program and stuff, he would probably hang around. Mason Appleton, probably the same way. Uh, I think Appleton's a little more expensive relative to what he's bringing recently. But the Jets also at this point, if they were to tear it down, probably don't care. He eats up a roster spot and some cap space and helps you stay afloat uh, in terms of cap legitimacy. So yeah, with the amount of salary that the Jets might be shipping out, um, I would say that those guys probably don't get moved. Nick Ehlers is another really interesting one because he's got, you know, uh, about a season and a half after this year uh, left on his deal, two years total. Um, but he's got a modified no trade clause, and it just feels like the Jets wouldn't really be thrilled with the idea of trading him. He's extreme value on his contract. He is one of our top creators. Might generally be our best skater overall. Uh, and if you were to trade him, right, you'd have to get a really good offer. And there's a really good chance that whatever some team is paying for Ehlers isn't worth what he's actually valued at, right? So I think for Winnipeg, it would just be a very uh, not sensible thing. I would imagine Ehlers himself would have to be the one to initiate a trade request, which maybe he does. I don't know. But, it, you know, in a, a scenario where you're tearing it down, it just feels like him going, probably not so much. I feel like Kyle Connor might be a player who'd be first on the chopping block. Uh, Kyle is kind of more of a luxury player, whereas Ehlers does so much for this team that really goes under the radar that I would imagine he'd probably stick around. Now, on the defense, right, you might be asking yourself, which of these players would end up, end up getting shipped out? And I, I can't imagine all that many, to be honest. I'd look at Dylan and DeMello, both his options, uh, for, for players who might get traded because no one's really wanting to take on Schmidt's contract. Morrissey is locked in for basically the rest of his career, and Pionk probably isn't that movable right now unless somebody was really interested in his points production. Maybe they would be willing to look past his clear defensive deficiencies. I don't know, but he's got a no-movement clause, uh, so I can't imagine that there's a lot of teams that he would really be potentially interested in in uh, moving to right now. I think he likes Winnipeg and certainly the Jets seem to like him a lot because he gets tons of ice time. Dylan and DeMello, though, both of those guys are expiring after the season. And I could imagine that, you know, plenty of teams would be looking for some um, very solid defenders here, two of Winnipeg's top defensive defenders. With DeMello, you have a little more versatility, and I think it would be a lot harder for me to want to see him leave because he's just a very solid player and somebody that the Jets don't have an easy internal replacement for. Uh, with Brendan Dillon, I think you have more options in, in guys like Dylan Sandberg, maybe getting an elevated role, but you know teams would probably want to chuck, I don't know, a second round pick or something for Dylan services, maybe even less. Whatever it is, you'd want to recruit at least some of the uh, some of the draft capital that you spent bringing him in, which wasn't cheap. It was two second rounders, if you can recall. So yeah, you know the defense probably won't see a ton of changes, but I would imagine 
the expectation of expiring contracts being moved out is probably the easiest way to go. Now, there is one player that I haven't yet talked about who's not a skater and I think is the one that everyone's kind of like waiting with bated breath even for this offseason because his future is very much in doubt when it comes to the Winnipeg Jets. We'll dive into that player and what he would look like potentially being moved uh, as part of a start of a uh, like a franchise teardown in just a little bit. Hello, friends, and welcome back to this episode of Locked On Winnipeg Jets, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Everydayers, thank you for rejoining us on tonight's episode. We are just talking about what the Jets would do if they were to really tear it all down and who might be getting shipped out and what players might be brought in for cheap uh, to start filling up roster spots and maybe even even eating some cap space. You know, the one player that I haven't mentioned exiting this team is, is Connor Hellebuck, and that is maybe the most important player uh, amongst all of these offseason scenarios, whether fictitious or realistic. Either way, whether we're talking about a potential rebuild or uh, the next several years of Jets hockey, all of it kind of hinges on what you do with Hellebuck because everything kind of feeds off of him. He has been our anchor, our rock and net, and really this franchise's centering focus for the last several years. Without Hellebuck, this team would not be anywhere near where it is right now. Uh, And so any conversation of what you do with the future of this squad really starts with him. And even if you ship out all these skaters, but you kept Hellebuck, right? Hellebuck would still be enough to carry this team to probably more wins than you would want for a squad really competing for like a lotto pick or something. So Helly would have to go. Now, if you're trying to trade Helly, the good news is that there's basically uh, 31 other teams out there who could really use his services. Uh, there really aren't many teams out there that have better goalies than Hellebuck right now. And I think Hellebuck would still improve almost all of them. So, you know, could you imagine a Hellebuck trade? I probably can't in my head, even though I know it might actually happen this year, uh, just because we're so used to having him around. He's been one of the most consistent players for this team over the past several years. He has carried the Jets to the playoffs at times, has even stolen them around against the Oilers a couple of years ago, uh, and has really been just one of the biggest faces of this franchise. And there's a really good chance that we've seen close to the last of him for the Jets uh, for the foreseeable future. So I don't know what his future holds, but I know that regardless of what he does next, I will miss him a lot. Uh, I know that he has been one of our, our true MVPs. And if he were to leave, it would be devastating because who do you even replace him with, right? You look at the free agents right now, and it's it's not great. Uh, in terms of goalies, right, let's look at the free agent goalies. It's it's grim. Your options are guys like Jonathan Quick, um, Varlamov, uh, Frederick Anderson, Jonathan Bernier, Cam Talbot. If the Jets were to trade uh, Hellebuck, I would probably look at um, – Freddie Anderson, maybe for a season or two. I have no idea what he even wants to do at this stage of his career. Uh, He's definitely getting up there in years, and there's a chance that he could be decent for the Jets, but certainly nowhere near what Hellebuck has been. If you're really trying to uh, go cheap, I guess you could go with Laurent Brassois, which would be really funny considering all of the stuff that happened in the playoffs. Brassois would not really be a great starter, I'll be honest. I don't know that I'd put a lot of faith in it, but maybe he could be decent. You could also maybe take a punt on Alex Nedeljkovic. He hasn't exactly had a sterling NHL career since moving to the Red Wings. Maybe you could salvage him. I have no clue. But all I know is that, generally speaking, the goalie free agent class is pretty crap. uh, Unless you want to take risks on players like, I don't know, uh, Ilya Samsonov, should the Leafs not want to resign him for who knows what reason. Aiden Hill, if the Knights can't really afford to retain him. Other players like that. Just guys with, you know, limited sample sizes and not a huge track record of success. But, you know, maybe Winnipeg wants to go that route and run two moderately okay uh, goalies. That does probably does not include um, our, our current backup in David Riddick. But maybe a 1A, 1B scenario is enough to sort of tie the Jets over until they finally get their next starter in maybe Dominic DiVicentis. I don't know. Uh, Other than that, though, you know, in terms of free agents uh, that could potentially join the Jets, should they rebuild all of it? I could see a couple of players like maybe James Van Riemsdyk, um, Max Pacioretty, 
uh, maybe even like a Kyle Poso. I don't know. These are guys that I feel like are, are really more interested in joining true contenders. Uh, some of these players, I mean, you know, you could sign them for a year and then trade them at the, the deadline or something. I feel like that would make the most sense. But some of these players didn't even move when they were um, available. Uh, James Van Riemsdyk, I know, was one of the biggest ones that I thought the Jets were actually going to trade for, and he didn't get traded anywhere. Uh, Jason Zucker would be an intriguing option as a potential cap eater and somebody that you could probably flip at the deadline. Uh, Gustav Nyquist, uh, maybe another option if he's healthy enough to join a team. I guess one of the most interesting potential options, if you really want to gamble uh, and, and you're not too nervous about him kind of flaming out, is Jonathan Duran. But I don't even know if Duran's going to be playing next year. I don't know what his um, career status is at this state. I don't know if he's really interested in coming back or if he does want to maybe take some time away from the sport. I know they just had some, you know, personal issues off the ice. So whatever Joanne needs, I would say that's the most important thing, uh, letting him kind of determine that. But other than that, you know, the the free agent class is kind of like players like Killorn, Tatar. Uh, and I, I suppose that you could technically build a, a roster of rather expensive players out of that. But whether it would win a lot, well... I would say at that point, you're probably focused on losing more than anything. So if you can find contracts that you could flip, that could certainly be an option. But all of this stuff I just said is probably in the realm of fantasy. I can't imagine that the Jets are super appetized by the uh, or find the idea of, of rebuilding particularly appetizing, but maybe they surprise us. Let me know what you think about this team and, and where you think it's going in the comments below or at my social medias at HL Living Loco and at LO underscore Winnipeg Jets. For tonight's episode, though, that is going to be all the time that we have. Thanks so much for choosing to make Locked On Jets your first listen of the day every day. Every day, as we will see you back here tomorrow, and I might, act, act, might actually talk about prospects this time. But like I said, for tonight's episode, that is all the time that we have. Thanks so much for listening. Have a great night, and go Jets go.